ridiculous. Don't you know these things are dangerous? They're always starting fires. Day. What a wonderful, crazy, exciting, exhausting day. It's going to be terrific from now on, no question. And then maybe Damien and I really can be happy. A tall, dark, handsome man is about to propose. <laughs> Aren't these things ridiculous? <laughs> yeah, well, it could have been worse. I could have got that one. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. It must have been meant for another table. What are you so worried about? I'm sure it doesn't mean me. I'm not that tall. Why don't you open your cookie? Okay, I will. <laughs> oh, very interesting. What does it say? It says, Chong <laughs> Lao. <laughs> but what does that mean? <laughs> it means, Confucius say, there's no time like the present. Oh. Oh, that, that guy said everything first, didn't he? <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> I wonder if he was the first one to say, I love you. I, uh, I think that, that that was Adam. Of course, Adam didn't have too many choices, did he? <laughs> Men are, are much luckier today. They have lots of choices. <laughs> yeah, well, all of those choices don't make any difference once you've made a decision. What are you talking about, Damien? Poppy, I'm talking about you and me. Look, I love you. I'm asking you to marry me. Maybe this time I can say yes. of Night is brought to you by squeezably soft Charmin bathroom tissue and by Folgers Crystals, the coffee that tastes as rich as it looks. Calvin? Hmm? It seems to me that you haven't said much in Miles' defense. I mean, I know you like the guy. Do you actually believe he is capable of what he's accused of? What you mean about beating up Barbara Montgomery? Of course I don't believe it. Miles is uh, incapable of that kind of an act of violence, even in a drunken state. Look, if uh, you haven't exactly noticed me making a big show of defending the guys, because I am a police officer in the case we are supposed to appear at least impartial. Right? Okay, okay. You know he didn't do it. I know he didn't do it. Anybody who spends five minutes with Miles knows that it's impossible he could do something so crazy and vicious. So how come the guys downtown don't know it? 
because we keep coming up against the same thing. I mean, the facts are staring us in the face, beginning with the fact that the man was there, Gavin. He was brought there. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean he didn't go crazy and beat her up. Anyway, if there is another answer, believe me, we'll find it. When? I can't move any faster until I get some new leads. The odds are 100 to 1. It's Barbara's former boyfriend. Oh, I see. So now you have a junior detective's badge. My theory is he walked in, saw Miles in her bed, and then beat the living daylights out of her. Yeah, well, um, you got to hand in your badge, bub, because it's a likely theory, but I already checked it out. And? Zero. Barbara Montgomery's ex-boyfriend is an ambulance driver who happened to be on duty that night. You're kidding. No. He checked out his alibi and he came up clean as a whistle. Oh, hell. This world is going crazy, Calvin. I mean, how can a man like Miles be accused of this? Man, I do not know. Obviously, he's been set up bit by circumstantial bit. By Nora Fulton. Yeah, well, they're not just going to accept our word for that, buddy. We're going to have to pull something else out of the hat. And right now, there is nothing left in this title brain of mine. We're just going to have to hope we get lucky. Maybe that's glad tidings, huh? Well, well you'll never know until you open the door. I thought you were getting it. Oh, all right, you lazy bum. Coming! Hi, Jamie. Come yeah. on in. Calvin. Hey, Tyler, what's happening, man? Come on in. Have a seat. Thank you. You want a beer? Sure, please. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, no, allow me. Oh, no, please don't move a muscle. I'll get it for you. <laughs> well, since you're so young and eager, why don't you bring back two, okay? I think I'll bring back three. <laughs> so what's happening, man? Well, I'm afraid I've got some crazy and rather disturbing news for you, Calvin. Yeah, hey, okay, out with it. The chief is missing. What did you just say? He said the chief is missing? What happened? All I got was a sketchy report, but apparently a former employee of Skye's followed him up to a mountain cabin and tried to blow his brains out. Tried? Well, he didn't succeed, fortunately, but he did manage to get Skye's house guest as a hostage. House guest as in who? Valerie Bryson. Oh, no, not Val. That's the report. And there's no sign of him? No, nothing yet. Yeah, well, where does the chief figure in all this? Well, you see, the chief ran up there on Skye's request to try to help out the local police. And when he got there, he left Skye in the cabin and went looking for Valerie and this guy who took her hostage. And that's pretty wild country up there. Nobody's seen either one of them since. Oh. Chief Mallory, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm okay. When I realized he was going to fire, I spun around and I hit the ground. I smashed my knee on a rock. It's pretty sore, but I think the only real damage is just my pride. Under the circumstances, I don't think you should be too concerned with that, but uh, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Thank you. How are you? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Scared, cold, tired, hungry, wet. <laughs> Nothing more than that. All right, I gotta thank you for what you did out there in the snow. That was a very extreme situation, and you sure did not lose control of yourself. You don't have to worry about me, Chief. After that incident with George Foley and now this, I feel like I can handle anything. I'm sure you can. <sighs> Listen, as long as we are gonna be orphans of the storm and trapped here, why don't you just call me Derek, huh? Okay. Derek. What do you think about when we move this cot over in front of the fire? It's a good idea, right here. Why don't we uh, check our resources here, huh? We are painfully shy in luxury. Oh, well, Sky warned me that I might have to rough it this weekend. Somehow, I don't think this is what he had in mind. But uh, well, we'll just see what we can do anyway. Oh. I'm so cold. Do you think we can get out of here tonight? I don't see how we can, not unless somebody comes up to the cabin. I think we're going to have to stay here until morning, until it's light, so we can find our way to civilization. I have no idea where we are. That's okay. We can make do. Derek, I'm thankful to be here. We have a fire. Hey, what more could we want? 
I think this fire should be our number one priority, just to keep it going. Well, is there anything else I should do to help? I don't think so, really. Flu seems to be open, so we got no problems there. We'll burn this wood. That's the beginning. Oh, here's some more newspaper. Oh, good. July 1980. Well, it doesn't have to be the latest news. It'll still keep us warm. Well, something like this happened to me once before. You mean you have had experiences along these lines before? I've never been taken hostage, no. One time in Switzerland, some schoolmates and I took off on an abandoned ski trail. We wandered around in the woods and got so lost, we went in circles. We were freezing, and finally we came across a deserted cabin, something like this. Got inside, there was a fireplace. Nobody had any matches. Well, you have obviously not learned your lesson. Carry matches with you at all times. You didn't have any with you. I was never stranded in Switzerland. You know, now I'm getting warmer. I'm feeling how hungry I am. Yeah. Let's try not to think about steaks and mashed potatoes with gravy and chocolate cake and coffee. Stop, and stop, please. I can't take it. Okay, let's um, pretend that we have just eaten such a huge meal that we couldn't even fit in another bite. <laughs> You're a real sport, Val. That's what I like about you. When things get tough, you really know how to hang on. It's easier being here than in the clutches of a madman with a gun. You know something else, Derek? You're not at all the way I thought you were. Just how did you think I was? Well, the other times that I've seen you, I, I got the impression that you were sort of gruff and humorless. <clears throat> now, here we are in the middle of nowhere. You've just been shot at. You have the responsibility of getting me home safely, and you're funny. <laughs> well, I think the danger is past, and we're going to be okay, and it's nice to get out of the office once in a while, you know? Oh. Even if these aren't the conditions I like. I'm grateful for the few blessings we got. Roof over my head, a fire here in this pot belly. Good company. The dinner was delicious. Thank you. The pleasure was all mine. Please come in, make yourself comfortable. Look, Geraldine left us fire. Would you like some uh, brandy? Thank you. Brandy would be fine. I'm so happy that we worked all this out between us. I felt very bad that uh, you were mad at me. Well, so did I. It was all ridiculous. Yes. I tried to tell you how things stood between Skylar and I, but you didn't understand, or I think maybe you didn't want to understand. Oh, no, that wasn't the case. It was actually something I'm sure you suspected all along. I was just plain jealous. <laughs> How sweet you are to admit that. Well, it's true. I was green with envy every time you two so much as looked at each other. Especially at that last dinner party we all had together. Well, you believe me now, don't you? You can't possibly believe that we have any real feelings toward each other. We were just playing a very nasty little game with each other. And as you probably know by now, Skylar Whitney can be very cruel when he wants to be. Well, I have spoken to Sky about it. In fact, we discussed it in detail. He was brutally frank about his feelings. Really? What did he say? I don't think we should go into that. No, 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 no. I think from now on we should tell each other everything. Besides, it would amuse me to know what Whitney had to say about me. Well, if you really want to know, his feelings were much the same as yours are about him. He was interested in you as a sort of revenge against your late husband. He was the man who took all of Skye's possessions. So Skye naturally thought it fitting that he should arrange things in such a way that he could possess everything that belonged to Jefferson Brown. Well, you see, it proves everything that I've said about Skylar, that he's a horribly nasty man. I don't really blame him for it. I think he went through a difficult time. Revenge was quite understandable. I didn't really believe him at first. 
But then he called me earlier and said he was taking Valerie Bryson away for the weekend. Well, everyone needs to have a silly little fling now and then. Hmm. I, I think it's more than that. I think he's quite serious about her. Anyway, he said that this weekend may well be an important one for him. The stage all set for me to give Valerie the big pitch. And then this has to happen. Where are they anyway? My parish hurts her. And why doesn't somebody call? down the drain. Cameron might even pull me in. Raven. The woman that I love. I'll bet anything she's enjoying herself someplace with Ian. The bum. Come on, Mitch. You so promise. Much. You're not listening to me. That's because it's way past my bedtime. It, oh. I haven't finished telling you about my day at Sid's Tavern. Hey, hey, remember that guy who was next to you the whole day? That was me. That was you? I was the guy who was taking all the orders and mixing the drinks and carrying all the trays. I thought I proved myself indispensable to you, and I ingratiated myself in front of every customer, except, of course, North Fulton. Well, I don't want to talk about North Fulton. Well, I don't want to talk about North Fulton either. I don't want to talk about anything. I just want to go to bed. Good. You just lie there, close your eyes, and I'll do all the talking. All right. My eyes are closed. I am listening. Talk fast. <laughs> Cliff, I have so many wonderful ideas about that tavern. Cliff, are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. Poppy gave me this great book, Restaurant Management, and if I can manage to read my oh, way through that, baby, I know I can... And Poppy, she's wonderful. I, I really think we're going to make a terrific oh, team. Oh, let's see. I mean, I mean, don't you? I mean, she may have the smarts, but I've got the experience. All right, yeah, I think you're going to be a great team. Good night, sweetheart. Oh, Cliff, wait a minute. I knew you'd change your mind. What about Francesco? What about Francesco? Well, do you think we ought to keep him on his ship? I mean, Cliff, face it, I mean, he's a little weird. Why don't you just get a jukebox that plays only Neapolitan music? Cliff, that's terrific. That's a terrific idea. I mean, I can keep it. I'll tell Poppy about it in the morning. Honey, it's morning already. Look, now, I got a court case to try in a few hours, and if my client goes to jail, it'll be your fault, not mine. So, you just trundle yourself off to bed, and I'll trundle myself off to mine. Cliff, I'm sorry. Good, I'll stay. I, oh, Cliff, you know, it's just that I'm so excited. Let's I, see, I shut up! Oh. <laughs> Who would call at a time like this? Oh, get the fur up there now!
look, that's the important thing, isn't it, huh? Is it, is it? Yes. Oh, oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. Yeah. I know, honey. I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't know. I talked to the fire chief for a minute. He thinks it was an electrical fire. Probably started in some faulty wiring around the Christmas tree. At least that's where they think the place started. No! That's not what it was! Tonight, Roger's old flame comes to Milwaukee, and he turns to the Fonz for advice on how to free himself from her spell on Happy Days. Then Laverne's walking on air when she test wears an experimental anti-gravity suit on Laverne and Shirley. And Jack's hot date may leave him spending a night in the cooler on Three's Company. After, guest star Jane Fonda catches the women at the office off guard on 9 to 5.